LG G5 is reportedly available in stores in the US on April 1st. There's word that US Cellular is pricing the phone at $636 with pre-orders at Best Buy starting March 18th and US Cellular on March 28th. I haven't heard anything yet though from the other big four carriers. LG is also hosting a conference for developers to discuss probably the specifics on how to make a third party module for the G5. The G5 has a removable module at the bottom so you can swap out batteries easily or add different modules like a camera grip or an aftermarket DAC. I'd love to see developers take advantage of this by making a high-end speaker or even a better camera lens for the phone. I don't know the rules or limitations LG is going to impose though, so I guess we'll see. The G5 is going to be LG's flagship phone running top-end specs. A 5.3 inch 1440p display with a Snapdragon 820 and 4 gigs of RAM. Two rear cameras, a 16 megapixel one and an 8 megapixel wide angle lens. A fingerprint reader, a micro SD slot for expandable storage. USB type C with quick charge 3.0. I think this will be a first. And again, a removable battery. Not something you typically see in today's line of smartphones. Plus an all new modular design that can equip the phone with extras. What types and how many has yet to be seen by third-party developers. If the under $650 price tag is true, then this might be a great contender at a bargain price compared to other flagships. I'll be on this as soon as I'm available to pre-order. Is the Exynos, Exynos, is that how you pronounce it? Exynos? Is the Exynos 8890 on the S7 and S7 Edge faster than the Snapdragon 820? There's a video out there of someone testing both variants. I'll leave a link in the description. In the video, it shows the 8890 beating out the 820 when it comes to app opening and the like. The Snapdragon 820 version is available in the US and I believe China, while the Exynos 8890 is available to the rest of the world. I don't endorse this test or anything, I just happened to come by it and I thought I would share. Speaking of the S7 Edge, I actually ended up exchanging mine just to make sure that my overheating issues weren't because of a faulty unit. When my new unit comes, I'll retest performance, I'll check out the overheating issue, lag, etc, etc. Google Fiber is making its way to Atlanta later this year. Atlanta, I'm jealous. Google Fiber offers 1000 megabits per second upload and download speeds at $70 a month. $70. I pay $79.95 for 75 megabits per second down and 10 megabits per second up. That means Google Fiber is 13 times faster down, 100 times faster up, and $10 cheaper a month. Of course, now that Google Fiber is entering the Atlanta market, Comcast all of a sudden is offering 1,000 megabits per second down and up for $70 a month. Perfect timing, Comcast. Will Chicago ever get that deal? Or will we have to wait for Google Fiber too? I think we know the answer to that. The funny thing is, if you want Comcast's gigabit internet plan, you have to sign up for a three-year contract. Otherwise, you have to pay $140 a month and be subjected to a 300 gigabyte bandwidth cap. And you guys wonder why you're one of the most hated companies in America. Google Fiber, come to Chicago already. We have pizza, we have hot dogs, and we have a lot of this guy. Can I stop smiling and nodding now? No, not yet! Just